Hello and welcome to this Union Solidarity International webcast. We're speaking to Sudhir Katiya of Prayas Labour Centre and he's giving us an update on the organising programme in the brick kiln industry. Welcome Sudhir and how are you? I'm fine, I'm very fine. Um, <coughs> thanks for joining at this time uh, for this webcast. Uh, <coughs> I'll be talking about the current progress with the workers' population that we are doing. Uh, we have been working, uh, PIAS works in a number of uh, areas in India with Britain workers. Uh, with USI support, we have been working in Bhilwara district in Rajasthan. This is the uh, start of the season when workers start coming into the Britain for work. Uh, in the cluster that we work in Bhilwara, uh, most of the workers are migrant workers from other states of uh, India. Workers come from UP and Bihar and Jharkhand. So fairly large distance. Now, in the off season, when the workers are not at big kilns, we do mobilization work at the source areas. So we go to the homes of workers and talk to them, hold meetings there. So that activity has been going on for the last one month. And in fact, our team made a trip to the states of Bihar and Jharkhand, which are like fairly long distance away from where uh, the the, the, the is located in Bhilwara, they are almost like 1000 kilometers away. So our team went to the Jharkhand area and we went around around 50 villages and spoke to the villagers. We also <coughs> shared with them a pamphlet, you know, uh, because we uh, we have developed a short of a demand charter for workers for this season, uh, which which puts demands related to wages and other issues on the, on the employers. So that wage, wage charter, the demand charter was shared with the workers and we shared our plans with them uh, and uh, we had a number of meetings in the villages with them. The team has now come back and we have set up an office in Bhilwana district in Mandal, Mandal town. Uh, this is the first time we have set up an office there and the team is now based there. It is now going around the, the big kills and mapping workers there, you know, finding out how many workers have reached what are the situations? So that work, the mapping work is going on. We are also doing individual surveys, you know, household surveys, to get a more detailed uh, output of the workers' conditions. So we hope to do that. We have already mapped four brickles almost completely. In the sense that we have mapped all the workers in these four brickles. We have also also uh, filled household schedules for 40 workers. So in, in next month we hope to uh, complete this work. We will be we will not be covering all the kills in detail. We will only be covering a sample of number of kills. So in the next month, by the end of next month, we hope to complete this mapping exercise, and we will be also bringing out a proper uh, documentation of workers' conditions of the so where the workers are coming from, what are the base rates, what are the general conditions in the big kills. So that work we hope to do in the next next month or so. Another work that we've done, uh, that, that we do in this amount of time is basically, you know, uh, bringing the, uh, the presence of workers in the brick kilns to the notice of the government departments who are supposed to provide services to the brick kilns. Now, there are three major services that we're talking about here. One is education, because most of the workers who come to the kilns come with their families. They also bring, around, bring along their children who stay at the brick kilns. In the normal course, the children end up doing work at big, big kills. So we have extensive child labor in all the kills. Now we have been putting pressure on the government to start to link up these workers with the schools nearby. And uh, this year also we have initiated correspondence with the government. We talked to the government. Our team went to the district headquarters. We met the district level people. And they have so far given a positive response. They have said that you bring the workers to the nearby schools and we'll enroll them. So hopefully we'll be beginning, we'll begin that work also in the next month, uh, bringing the children to the schools, nearby schools. The another two services that we try, we try to link the workers with, these are, one is the early childhood care services, what we, what we call in India is ICDS, Integrated Child Development Scheme, whereby the government is supposed to provide some sort of nutrition for the workers, for, for, the, for the young infants in G26 age group. So we have also talked to the government uh, for uh, linking with this ICDS scheme. And the, another one is health 
So that also we are discussing with the health people, with the doctors, with the local health department. We have given, we have given them the list of brickles, told them that so many workers are here, they are arriving. So you start up, get up and provide them services. So that is the work that is going on currently. And yeah. That's fantastic, Sutira. Really comprehensive report on the progress that is happening as a result of the work that you have been doing for a number of years, but the added value that you're able to bring to the villages and communities as a result of some of the support that we are providing uh, to the project. Out of the 50 villages that you've just referred to, Sutir, can you just give us a, a handle on the size of these villages? How many people are we dealing with? What is the scope and the extent of your work at this early stage in the season already? Yeah. Actually, Andrew, I, I have a report ready with me. Oh. And I'm really, really sorry that I could not send it to you. And, and immediately after this conference, I'll forward this report to you. It gives a detailed listing of the settlements that we visited, mm. uh, the houses that we saw that we went to. Uh, we also have got some pictures from the field, which we'll share with you. This is basically a very deprived location. It's one of the, I would say, one of the one of the poorest locations in the country. It's in, in Jharkhand state, and uh, these 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 people belong to a you know we we have this hierarchical caste system in India. So these people belong to a highly deprived caste, yeah. and they live in. In fact, they live. These, most of the people are living in settlements outside the main villages. You know, very often in India we find that the very lower caste people they don't live in the main village itself. They are forced to live outside, outside the village. So most of these people belong to these these two very low 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 caste which are lower down the hierarchy. They living outside the villages, and the settlements themselves are, uh, let's say. Roughly, I would say the size of 40, 50 households. Uh, that's an average size. It will, it, it will, it may vary also. Uh, so, once I'll be sharing this report with, to, with you. I think we would have contributed something like uh, over this uh, five days that the team was there. We would have contributed something like a thousand households through meetings, through individual interviews. Uh, that's the number I can say as of now. I'll be sharing this report very shortly with you, Andrew. That's fantastic, suit here and. We encourage everybody who's watching this clip or perhaps listening to it on iTunes to look at that report and see the extent of the work that is already happening this early on in the season. I recall, Sutia, in our previous conversation and our update with you that at that time you were training organisers and people in educational classes in order to go out into the field and to help families access the social services that you've referred to. Could you just yes. give us an update on how the training via the education courses has gone thus far and has it been very successful? Yeah, the training, the training we had, uh, the training that uh, when, we, when, I, when we spoke to you, the basically training of the, our organizing team. Yeah. The people, some of the people were from the PR Center. And we also had workers, you know, from our unions. In fact, one of those workers also came on the on the on the uh, on the side to chat with you. So the training went off fairly well. The training went off fairly well, and we would be having more such trainings. It was a three-day three-day residential training, and once the workers come to the once all the workers have arrived at the at the Bikkil site in Bhilwala, we would have one more round of this training before the season before we start our mobilization work proper. Yeah. So the training went off very, fairly well. Yeah. And, and in terms of the where we are at the stage of the new season, could you just give a very brief brief overview, Sue, here of when the season starts and when it continues to? Because this is a very important time, isn't it? The month or two before the season starts where a lot of the preparatory work has to go in because of the the nature of the workers who are coming from neighbouring states and could you yes. just give our listeners yeah. and viewers an idea of yeah. the, the sequence sure. of events? Sure, sure. See, bricking work, uh, work involves a number of processes. The first is making of, making of bricks, uh, raw bricks from mud. And these work, make, bricks are uh, dried in the sun, sun dried, and then they are taken to the firing kilns for firing. 
So these these different types of work are done by different types of work, workers. Like so, we have three four major categories of workers. One is the brick makers. Who, so normally the brick makers are the first to arrive on the site because that is the first work they do. Once you have stack ready, then this work this and this once you have stack of dried sun dried bricks ready, then these bricks are moved to the to the firing kiln. So that work is done by the carriers, you know, the brick carriers who take the sun dried bricks to the firing kiln, and then comes the work of the firers, you know, people who work on the kiln itself. So these are the three major categories of workers: the brick makers, the carriers, and the firers. Normally, the makers, the brick makers, come first on the site, then they are followed by carriers. Sometimes carriers carriers may come early on because they you have the last season, last season bricks ready, stack is ready, that is to be moved out for to the market. So sometimes the carriers may also come early on. Otherwise, normally the brick makers will come first. If this season, the brick makers have arrived in in the middle in the in the area that we are working. In, the brick makers have arrived. They have already made a large number of bricks, and now the in some of the some of the kilns that we are we are working in, the the, the chimney has been fired. Normally, this chimney firing takes place almost around a month after the growth begins. So, some of the kilns the chimney has been fired. That means the work is now started in full swing. The chimney firing it, it, it will take another around two three weeks before we start getting out new bricks out. So in another month, I would say that the production would be in full swing. You know, and we we uh, and we time our mobilization. You know, for uh, wages uh, at the station area, we time it with the, with the period when the work work is in full swing. So we we would be doing the mobilization almost two months from now. That is in the uh, early early January. Okay. That is the that is the time that we have set ourselves. You know, early January and before that we will be undertaking very intensive mobilisation work with the workers. We will be having large scale meetings. We will we will share this demand chapter, and we will be putting pressure on the employers. And in early January we hope to have some big mobilisation and final you know a call for negotiation with the employers. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much for that update. I mean. Very helpful as always to hear about the exciting work that you're involved in. Sue, to hear about how you are helping workers and helping their families access social services in some of the poorest areas of India. And let's not forget that the more poor people live in the Indian subcontinent than in any other place in the world. So if you're telling us that you're working in areas that are the very poorest in India, then it's very pleasing for us to know that our support is helping to improve the lives of people and to work with you, you who have got the expert knowledge, the who are doing excellent work on the ground to try and transform people, we just want to help you help more people. So once again, thank you for this update with Union Solidarity International, Sutir, and my friend, we look forward to working with you over the, the coming months so we can help you help people to build union power. Thanks very much, comrade. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. We also value our relationship with USA very much and we hope to continue this relationship. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Andrew. Bye-bye. Thanks, Sadeem. Thanks. Thanks.